there are very few situations in which we want to race anyone. In fact, yet yeah, make that no situations. And yet in games, sometimes it feels we can't go five feet without some oddball halting our adventures to challenge us to a head-to-head -head speed battle, in which they'll usually cheat in some sneaky way, even though we're quite busy trying to get on with other things like, oh, saving the damn world and everyone in it? Here are the weirdest athletes in games who really should find another hobby. Along the way, beware mild spoilers for the following. Automata, you play as an android soldier whose advanced skills include high tech combat and running on sand in heels. Amazing. But the greatest challenges that android protagonists to be a 9S face are not given to them by their Yorha commanders, but one set by this high speed machine with a great paint job and nothing better to do than fly around in circles. This speed-loving little bot challenges you to not one, but three races across various routes, all of which are usually covered in enemy machines, which FYI won't attack the high-speed machine, and require climbing or jumping across buildings. And to that last point, may I just point out that that robot can fly. Despite these clear advantages, this bot makes out like it's a fair contest. But the biggest pain in your cybernetic neck is the final race. Here, the route for the high-speed robot, did I mention he could fly, is a straight line, whereas non-flying cyborg anime children 9S and 2B have to take the long way round around a crater. At least you can tinker with Nier Automata's chip upgrade system to boost your speed and put the brakes on Cheatbot 2000. <laughs> At least that's what we're calling it. It knows what it did. When you finally beat its robotic butt, your airborne opponent awards you the grand prize of not bugging you with any more races and declares it has reached its ultimate goal. Wait, what do you mean that was my life? Are you retiring from racing? Automata, everyone. Never challenge a ghost to an athletic competition. They don't get tired, they don't need to breathe, and they can't submit to blood tests for performance enhancing drugs. But even with all that, one spectre in particular proves a spectacularly unfair opponent for Link in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Dampe the Gravekeeper. When you first meet Dampe, you might not think he'd offer much challenge in a test of speed. That's because he's a lumpen old man who takes care of the Kokiri Village Cemetery. And by takes care of, we mean we'll happily stick his spade into any grave you want to see what's buried there. It's a graveyard, Link. There's a piece of heart in every grave. But while he may not have been the best gravekeeper, Dampe really learns to excel upon his death, which happens at some point in the seven years that Link misses when he travels forward in time. Now Dampe is beneath the soil he used to dig through and has a new obsession besides meddling with the dead, time trial races. <laughs> And oh boy, Dampe is a speed demon! To be fair, it helps that he can hover above the ground, which you might think would be a huge enough advantage that Dampe didn't also feel the need to hurl fireballs at you every single second. But you'd be wrong. <laughs> Seeing as Link is trying to save Hyrule from Ganondorf's oppressive rule, you'd imagine he'd have more important things to do than get set on fire by ghosts. But bad luck, beating Dampe is the only way to get his treasure, the hookshot, which you need to complete the game.
What a ghost needs with a grappling hook is a mystery, of course, like how Dampe came to have a halo, despite him having spent his whole life desecrating graves. Probably took it off a corpse. I don't care what you say, shut your mouth, shut it, shut, just keep it shut. Oh, you know full well exactly what you didn't say. It's no good. Well, you can be surrounded by your young girls and your threesomes and your parties, and you will be miserable. We're no experts in the rules of athletics, just ask our javelin coach. As long as you ask him during visiting hours, the hospital's very strict about that. But even we know that for a sporting competition to be fair, everyone involved should know what the rules are before it begins. Did you want it so much? Come and get it! And as such, poor Trevor from GTA 5 gets severely cheated in this impromptu race, to which he is challenged by exercise enthusiast Mary Ann, who challenges all three playable protagonists to a race in the course of the game, and whose manic ranting Trevor finds very attractive. Oh, I love you! Not only does Mary Ann jump the gun on the impending bike race, she doesn't even tell Trevor it's happening until she's literally already cycling away. Prove it! On the bike! Now! Oh, sweet Jesus. What follows is a dangerous and difficult race down the Vinewood Hills, made all the trickier by random hikers in the way and the fact that GTA's twitchy bike controls make it difficult not to stack it down the mountain. Evolution demands that we rut like beasts! Besides, Trevor doesn't have time for this. He's a busy man, he's got lots of important things to do. Oh, well, I mean, not that, but important things. Trevor, we talked about this. You're making me look bad. If there's one thing we've learned from video games, it's that when you meet a 10 foot tall talking penguin, just, just best to do what it says. To be fair, in Super Mario 64, everyone's favourite plumber starts off on quite good terms with the gigantic penguins who inhabit Cool Cool Mountain. The mountain so ice, they described it twice. In this level, Mario helps one of these huge flightless birds find their lost child, a job for which the little penguin's mama rewards you with a precious star. Here we go! But the next giant penguin you meet is less adorable. The so-called Big Penguin can be found living in a mountainside shack, and describes itself as the World Champion Sledder, a title that it clearly has just made up, as it is neither in possession of a sled nor the opposable thumbs required to hold one. Of course, this is all preamble to a race against Big Penguin, which requires Mario to slide on his belly, or buttocks, down a perilous winding slope that's incredibly easy to fall off. And even easier to fall off when Big Penguin bumps you into the abyss. Yeah, starting to see why there aren't any other penguins left in the sledding championship league. Big Penguin, you murderer. And while he's only too happy to play dirty, heaven help you if you try to take a shortcut of your own. Any deviation from the route and Big Penguin will declare you disqualified and deny you the star you need to progress. Ah! Come on, Big Penguin, I'm trying to defeat Bowser here. What do you think will happen when he rocks up at Cool Cool Mountain, eh? Baby Penguin Rotisserie, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, that should not be making me feel hungry. It's an ironclad rule of foot races that every competitor has to run the same course. Unless you're a villain in a Wario game, that is, where, by definition, you've got to be worse than Mario's ne'er-do-well alter ego, who, just for context, at the start of this game is on TV news under the headline Garlic Gluttony. Step forward Carpaccio, a wealthy thief who, like Wario, is after the legendary Wish Stone. But unlike Wario, looks like a tiny pixely Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic, from the alternate timeline where he evilly pushes Kate Winslet off the floating door to save himself, instead of freezing to death like a hero idiot. I'm just saying 20th Century Fox, I have this reboot script ready to go.
Carpaccio admits that he can't beat Wario in a straight fight, so instead challenges you to a race. Fair enough, you might think, until he suggests that he runs one way and Wario runs another. <laughs> Which all starts to make sense when you realise Carpaccio's route is nothing more than a series of short corridors, while yours is an obstacle race that requires you to use all the powers you acquired thus far in the game to progress and hamper Carpaccio wherever you can. But the race is incredibly tough. While Carpaccio trundles lazily towards the finish line, Wario's longer route is made even longer by the fact he has to make time-consuming outfit changes almost every second. See, Wario, this is why all of my clothes are tear-away. To save time. <laughs> oh, well then where are my tear-away trousers? I'm telling you, officer, I don't know what happened. These trousers aren't even mine. Yeah, yeah, get in a van. In a post-apocalyptic future, certain skills will become more valuable, such as field dressing a wound, or knowing which plants are safe to eat, or transforming into a cool motorbike. Of these, it's the latter that Johnny from RPG Chrono Trigger has invested in, and with his half-human, half-motorbike body, has become king of the robots in what remains of the planet you and your companions are exploring. This showboating cyborg is obsessed with bikes and challenges you to a race across a disused highway before you can say, hey Johnny, seriously, let us pass. We're trying to travel back in time to undo the apocalypse. It's more important than whatever you've got going on here. Predictably, Johnny gets his way though, and you must beat him in a road race to progress in the game. One that's A, extremely unfair in terms of weight classes because you're hauling your entire gang while he's only got to shift half a human and half a motorbike, and B, mostly involves pressing the boost button and ramming into the back of Johnny. Oh, how I hope those robot wheel legs can feel pain. Johnny might hold up your adventuring with his ludicrous insistence on racing, but you get the last laugh because in sequel game Chrono Cross, he appears once more as a mangled wreck by the roadside. Ooh, I take it back. Hope those robot legs don't feel pain. So there are just some of the characters that spend their life waiting around for you to run past only to make you run around with them and they cheat all the time as well and it's not fair and I'm too, I've got to go save the world so I don't have time for this. Stop timing me. I've got to use that time to go save everyone. Anyway, if you can think of any other examples, uh, you should run down to the comments and quickly type that in because I know that there are plenty more examples. Please send them our way. And uh, also, once you've done with that, uh, you should run and hit the like button. And then you should run over to Outside Xbox and go watch their Hitman playlist, which is very good. They're very funny. It's really cool. And then you should run over to us again and watch uh, the race to the 3D stuff in the 90s, which was bad. And then you should run to the subscribe orb and subscribe. We're good.